It feels like every week there's a brand new AI coding tool that changes everything and promises to automate software engineering as a whole. I've been using AI to help me code for about two years now since the early Chad GPT days, and I've had hands-on experience working with many of the tools that are out there now, and I'm constantly trying new tools out as they come out. It's difficult to tell all of these tools apart and read through the hype to figure out what they're actually capable of. So I created a set of criteria to evaluate these various AI coding tools across a number of different areas. I wanted to benchmark them against an ideal perfect AI coding product, one that would essentially generate a full stack application and give you the keys, have it all deployed after a brief conversation, and then would be able to make significant changes just based on your feedback. Now, you'll hear a lot of tools claim to do this sort of thing, but the reality is that they usually can build, you know, maybe a few files at a time. They don't deploy it. They might generate bad code. They might have a bunch of errors and they're not reliable. So as I evaluate these tools, I'm gonna be looking at all of these different areas to come up with the final composite score. Essentially, there are 10 evaluation criteria each of which is 10 points, which all add up to a total of 100 as the maximum possible score. First, let's take a closer look at the intelligence category. When it comes to context awareness, the perfect tool would understand exactly what the user is asking for. You wouldn't have to point it in the right direction. It would understand your intent and vision and be able to apply that across any number of files that need to be changed to implement your vision. As we go down the scale, the user has to provide more and more context and more clarifications as the conversation goes on. In the worst case scenario, the AI doesn't know what the user is talking about and just gets lost and goes in the wrong direction. The next evaluation criteria is output quality and solutions near the top of the list are gonna output perfectly clean code, things that are going to be really easy to read, really easy to share with somebody. It will proactively refactor things as necessary. Uh, we'll have error handling for all these various edge cases. And as you go down the list, you know, that gets worse and worse. And towards the bottom of the list, you would have solutions that are just outputting junk that doesn't work, or maybe it's got egregious security issues or no error handling. And maybe it's jamming everything into one huge file and not doing any sort of refactoring. So you definitely want to stay away from solutions that have low output quality. Next up, we have autonomy. And this is about agentic capabilities. Like how much can the solution do without you having to jump in? How intelligent is it to be able to keep going on a particular requirement and just iterate on the solution? A perfect score would be able to keep going and only ask you for input when something is truly unclear. Going down the list, you might have an AI that is, you know, interrupting you and asking you for a lot of feedback a lot of the time. And towards the bottom of the list are tools that just don't have any agentic capabilities. Maybe they just generate code for you and then they're going to wait for a response so that you can evaluate what it is, maybe apply the code and keep going from there. So those three criteria add up to the intelligence category. Next category is our acceleration category. And in here, uh, I was really thinking about what does it mean to go faster when you're coding? And it boils down to a couple of different things. So first it's the iteration size. What is the scope that you can implement with a particular AI tool? Is it just going to complete a few lines of code? Is it gonna write a function? Is it gonna write an entire file, a multi-file feature? Or maybe it's going to build out an entire architecture and multiple different microservices. This is what I consider as iteration size. And where does the AI tool that we're evaluating actually kind of hit the limit of what it's capable of and where is its sweet spot? If a tool can only do effective line completions and sometimes fails at functions, that's gonna be towards the bottom end. But of course, if you have a tool that can build an entire full stack application with a bunch of different services all in one go, that's a very large iteration size. But even if you can build a full application from scratch, if that takes forever, like if that takes days of time and you can't provide any feedback, that could be a real problem and you could end up actually working more slowly because you're not able to give feedback to the system quickly enough uh, to iterate. So iteration speed is how quickly does it execute on those steps? Can it build the full feature in a few seconds or is it gonna take it a few minutes or hours? 
Ideally, with a perfect application, you'd be able to build full stack apps in seconds. The last criteria in the acceleration category is capabilities. And this really covers all of the different features that an application can do particularly when it comes to speeding you up. So if there's a way to upload images or be able to have a conversation with it to make progress more quickly than having to type everything out, uh, that's a bonus. Or if there's a feature to automatically deploy your software and provision the necessary resources and databases, uh, that's gonna speed you up a lot because we're looking at the full life cycle, not just writing code, but being able to actually create products end to end. So the capabilities criteria really captures the completeness of the entire solution and how the features that it has actually speed you up. The next group of criteria is called the experience criteria. And in here we have flexibility, ease of use, and reliability. When it comes to flexibility, are you able to use any language, any framework? Are you able to export your code and use it somewhere else? Are there a bunch of extensions? Is there support resources? All of this creates for an environment that is flexible, right? You want to have a tool that's going to not lock you into their proprietary services. You want to have something that you can take and move to a different place that you can use whatever language you want. You want that developer freedom, so to speak. So that's what the flexibility criteria is all about. And then when it comes to ease of use, it's about ease of use, right? It's how easy is it to actually use this product? How user friendly is it? Is it beginner friendly? Is it good for experienced developers that might be looking for some additional features? Uh, that criteria really seeks to encompass all of that. And then reliability is just how consistent is this thing? Are you going to run into errors all the time? Is it going to just delete your files overwrite? you know, make features disappear by accident? Uh, is it going to be consistent in the results that it delivers? Is it going to work across a number of different requirements, across a number of different applications that you want to build? So that's really what the reliability criteria is about. And then finally, we have the value criteria, which is, I mean, it's really about the cost. Is building the full stack application going to cost you thousands of dollars or are you going to be able to do it on the free tier of whatever service this is? That does make a big difference. Now, I do want to clarify that this is really about the value that you're getting for the money. So if you got a solution that's totally like best in class and yeah, maybe it costs a moderate amount of money, it is still likely to get a solid score in this category. So all 10 of these criteria add up to a maximum score of 100. And as I review different AI coding tools, I'm going to be doing a number of different things. So first, I'm evaluating each category independently, and I'm trying to kind of fit any features or aspects that it has to the software into these categories so that I can evaluate it fairly. I'm going to be testing with some realistic code examples and having some varying complexity that I challenge the software with. And ideally, my evaluation is going to take something like a week, uh, but at least, you know, a few hours or days of working with a piece of software to make sure I really get the essence of it. I mean, some tools are going to be limited, so there's really not that much more to see. Um, than you know, you can get experience with in the first few hours, but other tools, it might be difficult. Like if they're at the top of the line and you want to really push the limits, you know, it might take a week or longer to really get a good feel for a tool. So I'm going to be giving them a fair challenge and I'm going to be using them in a variety of different use cases. What I will not be doing is trying to recreate Snake or some other kind of basic thing that you can just go and copy code for off the Internet. I really want these tools to be challenged to build something new and something valuable. So now that you understand the Volo score, go check it out in action and see what I think of some of these top AI coding tools. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care.